Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will look at this XMG Neo 16 notebook, which is the 2024 model. So that's the latest revision. XMG has been using this external water cooling solution to Oasis for several years, but now I think it's getting more and more mature. They did again some changes to the connector for the water cooling connection to the notebook itself, but also some internal revisions for how the water is flowing across the entire cooling solution. That's something I want to observe in today's video. But also there's to me this very interesting aspect that this is a pre-production sample that comes with the Honeywell face change pad. In the production this notebook comes with liquid metal applied between the CPU and the cooler and also the GPU and the cooler but because this is a pre-production sample they didn't have time or something and they used the Honeywell pad. So this gives me the opportunity to check out the benefits of liquid metal if there are benefits because a lot of people asked me this on like my discord and stuff what the, yeah, the temperature difference could be between those different cooling solutions but I personally never checked this out. So that is a quite cool opportunity and then we just want to see what kind of benefit we get with the ex external water cooling unit and what kind of changes they made to the cooling solution. This video is powered by Seasonic with their MacFlow fans. These non-RGB fans combine both a low noise level and at the same time high airflow. In addition they come with the perfect daisy chaining cable management system. Depending on your requirements you can connect a different amount of fans directly with each other. For example two or three fans for water cooling on a radiator. The fans are held together with a magnetic system which is extremely strong and also electrically connects the fans. With additional adapters you can extend this even further. So for example two fans on top of your PC for the AIO and a third fan as case exhaust fan. Find out more about Seasonic's MacFlow fans in the description below. When it comes to hardware we have a 4900HX CPU built in and an RTX 4090 laptop GPU that obviously has a little bit less power than a normal 4090 that you build inside your desktop system. We have a 2560 times 1600 pixel and 240 hertz um, 16 inch monitor so that is also I would say a very solid base uh, for gaming. But if you look at the max power consumption that XMG is allowing, I think it's like 200 or 205 watt on the CPU and 175 watt on the GPU. So if you would load both of them fully, in theory that's almost 400 watt which is definitely massive and probably too much for any kind of yeah, air-cooled cooling solution that is typically built in a notebook and I guess that's why the external water cooling is necessary. I just ran Cinebench R23 for the German video take. As you know, I'm shooting every video twice, so I also have to repeat all the testing twice. You can see my stock condition is 32,600 points. So that's about maybe 6,000 points less than a 4900K uh, desktop CPU. I'm just going to repeat it now. And I just want to take a look at the power limits. You can see the limit is 205. If we monitor, the power consumption, then it's also starting rather high, like the power consumption for a notebook, that, that is insane, like how much power this notebook allows the CPU to draw, which is then also leading to the kind of score we could see, like 32k points in R23 for a notebook is quite impressive. And so repeating the tests, it's like 400 points less, that's probably just normal fluctuation, but you can see, and I would say, quite drastic drop in the power consumption which is probably caused by yeah the CPU being not cool enough and probably because the, the stock air cooling solution cannot maintain such a high uh, heat load from the CPU. We could also see peak temperature on the CPU package of 102 degrees Celsius. I'm now going to run 10 minutes of R23 to see at which power consumption this ends, like how much heat can the air cooling continuously dissipate. So at that point, after like 5-6 minutes, it doesn't really matter anymore what kind of PL1 or PL2 you're setting, because you can see it's still set at 205 watt. But if we check the CPU package power, it is somewhere between like 120 and 130 watt, which is just limited by the air cooling solution inside the notebook. That's why I'm repeating the R23 again to see what kind of real performance you would see after the heatsink is saturated. So in result we lost about 10 to 12% of performance. 
And that's why I think that this entire concept with notebooks and connectable water cooling is quite interesting because I think if you have it stationary at home and you can still use this, this is still usable while you're traveling somewhere, but once you get back to your stationary system and connect it, then you should be able to get more performance. Another thing is with gaming in this condition without the water cooling, we will have to probably split the 120 to 130 watt power draw yeah, between the CPU and the GPU, which should lead to a drop in performance. That's what I want to check now with gaming. In the XMG control center, you can select different profiles. I know it's German now, but you should be able to understand it. So there are different profiles like balance, enthusiast and overboost. I'm testing everything in overboost because this should give us the highest performance. I have to say in this state, so I waited a little bit for warm up period. This is pretty loud with the stock condition. The CPU is clocking somewhere just below 4 GHz and up to like 4.5 on the peak horse, while the GPU is sitting at about 82 degrees Celsius and clocks between typically 2300 and close to 2400 MHz. We have FPS of around 180 on average and about 100 in the 1% low. So that's definitely an enjoyable rate to play PUBG in this setting. On the CPU peak cores, we see temperatures between 85 and like 95 degrees Celsius. And this is the small XMG Oasis water cooling unit that contains reservoir, a radiator and fan. As you can see through this side, I still have to fill the reservoir, which you can do through this thing on top. And on the side, we have the connections. So one inlet for the CPU power. I think you just connect the normal PSU here from your notebook and then with an additional cable you route it through and then back to your notebook and here we have the connection ports for the water cooling. This would be the tubing with the quick connect ports. So just magnetic, put it on, that's basically it. I think they could have made something in addition for at least a stationary unit to always make sure that this is always safely attached. It's probably fine this way though. And on that side that goes to the notebook, they changed something, at least I didn't see it before. So this is this additional small metal piece on top. And from what I've seen, it is still guided with the magnets to the ports, but then this additional thing just clicks in and keeps it more securely in place. And that's it. Is it normal that the fan is not spinning? Not sure if I'm missing something. I mean, there's only this one button I can see in the front. Hmm. So according to the manual, the blue blinking LED in front indicates that Bluetooth is not connected. And in control center, I could find it as connectable and now I will try to connect it. So something happened because I can definitely hear a pump running. Yeah, seems much better. I'm not quite sure, this seems to be a bit buggy. Now it's changing, but not always. Like this, this is like quiet profile, high performance, maximum. But you can see or maybe also hear it, not sure if you can hear it. But now it's not, yeah, now it's running on the max. Seems, seems a bit buggy for whatever reason, but okay. I also cannot, like change and select this is fan this is pump but i cannot yeah select them independently and select specific rpm or something yeah so we're trying again cinebench with water cooling connected the cpu is still quickly hitting the limit of about 96 degrees celsius we can definitely see a difference though, even though it's just a first quick run without heat up, it's again 32K points, so there's no big difference, but we can definitely see a difference in the CPU power consumption because at the end of the previous test, we were seeing like 140 watt-ish, and now it's still in the region of like 200. The water cooling solution is definitely helping. Previously, we saw like 120 to 130 watt, maybe 140. Now we can see up to 180 and lowest is like 140. So we see an improvement of about 20 to 50 watt. That is definitely significant. Now after the warm up period, we will repeat Cinebench as a single test again. Previously, without water cooling, we had about 29,000 points after warm up phase. And now we are close to 30,000 points, so it's definitely helping. I was just about to do the German take when I realized there is some water on my desk, which is probably not good. I was about to say that I could subjectively hear 
that at least the fan slightly, yeah, is slightly running slower, which means that there is this benefit of like the cooling and then the notebook not being as loud, but yeah, maybe we have a tiny problem here. I don't really think that it's leaking by itself, but it's probably because I moved the laptop once in a while or like moved this a little bit because if I just move the connector on the back a little bit, you can see it straight starts to leak. That's what I meant earlier where I had the feeling that this is a little bit loose. It should maybe have the same thing as this one in the back that it has like an additional clip or I don't know, a different mechanism, just not only magnets, some screw or whatever because yeah, not ideal. As you can see, that's what I mean. It's a little bit loose and if I just move it a little bit like that, at least there was a drop of water. Yeah. Here we go, so yeah. If you probably never touch it and make sure you don't touch this, then it's maybe not a problem, but yeah, not a fan. So now again, it's not connected via Bluetooth, which means that I have to yeah, reconnect it every single time over the software. It says something with liquid state error, maybe because I disconnected it on the back and there was no flow. So I'm just going to connect it again. Okay. You know, I mean, you're once in a while moving your notebook, it might not always be in the same location and then the tubing will move a little bit. I would not trust this as a normal user to never leak, yeah. I also don't understand why someone put more effort into RGB than like adding a fan control. I probably won't care as much if this is blinking or not, but I would like to, you know, not have the pump at max speed, but maybe have the fan spinning a little bit, but it's nothing I can change. It is a significant improvement in gaming. We see pretty much all the time 5 GHz on the P-Cores stable and we can see an improvement in FPS by about 10 to 15 both on average and 1% lows. And also the GPU definitely improved. We can now see stable 2445 MHz on the GPU. It is much colder, about 10 degrees Celsius colder and much higher clock. So yeah, I'm impressed with how much it changes in gaming. We will now proceed to open it, check out the interior cooling solution and also then swap the paste to a liquid metal. The water routing definitely changed. In the previous model, I just saw some pictures online, they basically just put a, a copper tube on top of the heat sink or on top of the heat pipes, whereas now, this is inlet right here, inlet and outlet, the water will just go around the GPU and the CPU and sits inside this on the bottom right here. So completely different design and much better than having just a copper tube on top of the, of the heat pipe. That was a huge struggle. I removed all the screws, but it was sticking so extreme to the surface. I'm not sure why. So I started like removing it from, from the back here, lifted up, trying not to break things. Uh. Hey. Well, I am completely confused. If this is not liquid metal, then I don't know what it is. This is weird. This is really weird. I mean, they sent this unit to me saying, or the reason why they sent it to me is because they said there is the Honeywell pad on it and then I can apply liquid metal myself, make it ready, you know, add this, you can see there's this foam around the GPU to protect it, to make sure that the liquid metal is not leaking. They even sent me this kit where the, this frame is included. Now I'm confused. I just double checked my entire email loop to be sure that I didn't make a mistake. But yeah, this should not be liquid metal. They said that liquid metal will be available end of March and I'm shooting this end of February. So this doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I think I will just probably reapply liquid metal with you guys because I think, I mean, just looking at the application, could be improved. I took some data before taking it apart, so a Cinebench R23 run, so we can double check if it was a problem or not with the application or if this is just from yeah, taking it apart and then that's probably almost the end of the video. So I think we just add in a little bit of cat content. Just for the loss of the content I was waiting for.
At least we could see that there is plenty of liquid metal applied on both a CPU and GPU, which is usually not a problem. That's what they always do on notebooks and it's protected by the foam frame, so that should be okay. I'm not quite sure about the heatsink application though, because it seems to me that it was not applied on here. Typically this kind of imprint that you see on here and here only happens if you don't pre-apply it on the cooler surface as well, because it's strongly recommended to yeah, apply it on both a surface to break the surface tension of the liquid metal to improve the connection to the material. Seems not to be done here. I will just try to reapply it now with the material that's existing. I mean, there's, there's plenty of liquid metal on here that I can use. Now the liquid metal is evenly spread on all areas, all contact surfaces. I know that there is still the yeah, excess spill of the material, but that's really no problem. I'm just going to put it back on there. And yeah, due to the frame, that's really no issue. Everything back assembled, laptop is back up and running. And also this time the water cooling unit connected itself without me having to go into the control center. So it's getting better. So I'm doing another Cinebench R23 comparison run. I think first look, the temperatures were better with the freshly applied liquid metal, even though the score didn't really change. But that's something I will look into now. I have quite interesting, but at the same time confusing test results. What I can say for sure is that both CPU and GPU are running much colder. You can definitely see that. The GPU is constantly staying below 70 degrees Celsius. CPU is also staying colder, but you can also see if you closely observe it that the CPU is clocking lower than before. I'm not quite sure why that is the case. Is this maybe because the GPU is staying colder, thus maybe clocking higher and for that reason then loading the CPU more? I'm not quite sure. I double checked everything. The settings are exactly the same. I rebooted multiple times, checked it, the power profile, everything is the same. You can also see that the performance is higher than before, which just confirms that we don't really have a performance issue. We have higher average and higher 1% low FPS than before, but the clocks on the CPU for, the, for whatever reason are lower than before. But yeah, higher performance, lower temperatures. Now after evaluating the data, we can see a drop of temperature in Cinebench R23 by about three to five degrees Celsius on the P-cores. Now this leads to a tiny increase in frequency measured over the entire Cinebench R23 run of about 35 megahertz. That is measurable yet almost neglectable in any kind of application. This video definitely turned out different than I expected. We were not able to test the Honeywell versus liquid metal comparison because suddenly liquid metal is pre-applied but not in a perfect application. As you could see it was not applied on the cooler. I'm pretty sure about that because it just would look different and you could also see that after doing it properly you can see yeah, a benefit in temperatures. That is always something I'm sometimes wondering about because I know that they are using a Grizzly Conductor Nout, but why are they not talking to us and ask how you should apply it? That is sometimes something I'm wondering about. That happened multiple times before. I mean, it's kind of common knowledge in our industry, in our bubble, that liquid metal has to be applied on both surfaces. It's also written in the instruction, so I'm not quite sure why they don't do it. Going over to the entire concept itself, I like the fact that you can have an external water cooling unit to dissipate more heat, to make your notebook more quiet. More quiet is maybe, yeah, a difficult aspect because now the pump is running in the quiet mode, quiet state, which I personally think is still too loud, but I cannot regulate it manually. And I also cannot independently regulate pump and fan which is quite odd. I'm not quite sure why that's not possible. If I want higher cooling, I can only set it to maximum, which then pushes the pump to max speed. And that's, it's way too loud. Max speed is way too loud. I would like, yeah, lower pump speed, but then maybe higher fan speed for better heat dissipation, but that's just not possible. Then there's the problem with connecting the tubing. I see the point why they made it so easy to connect and disconnect it with magnets and like just, hold it on there and quickly release it. That makes sense on the laptop side, but why would you do this on the stationary side? It doesn't really make any kind of sense. And you could see that, at least for me, I just moved it a little bit and I straight had a leakage. Why would you do that? Why would you not have some kind of mechanism on here 
that locks the tubing to the stationary unit. Just have any kind of clip. I mean, it doesn't have to be a screw. It could be a screw, but you could only have a clip that latches in and yeah, just stops it from disconnecting. It would be very easy, but in this state, there is always the risk that if you move something, that you have some kind of leak. I don't get it. There's one more thing we didn't talk about at all, and this is this tiny plastic piece, which is meant for draining the water cooling loop of the notebook. Because if you read through the manual, XMG strongly recommends to not use the notebook after disconnecting it from the water cooling loop without draining. They say whenever you remove it from the water cooling loop, you have to drain whatever is left in the notebook because they cannot guarantee that it doesn't spill. There's just a tiny rubber gasket in the back for those connectors and they say they cannot guarantee that this part is not leaking. So they always advise you to, to drain it, which is absolutely annoying. And also, I mean, you could just have something covering the ports. Why not just have a cover that goes on top that stops it from draining? It would be so much more convenient and I don't know. That doesn't make any kind of sense and it's very annoying. I would never on a daily basis use this, take it with me, put it back and drain it every single time. No way I would do that. In the end you have to keep in mind that these things are not quite cheap and those are high-end units. And keeping that in mind, I personally would expect a smoother experience, like things to be more thought out and yeah, the software to be more mature, have more options besides RGB. Meanwhile, a few weeks later, because I took the time to send the video to XMG first, so they have the opportunity to also give me a statement on some of my critics that I pointed out in the video. The first thing they don't agree with is one statement that I said at the beginning of my video, that about 120 to 130 watt will relate to the entire cooling solution. I'm totally with XMG here, because I was just testing a CPU only scenario, and in that scenario, it was just 120 to 130 what the cooling solution could dissipate for the CPU but that was CPU alone and not including the GPU and because of the higher power density of a CPU it is more difficult for a notebook to cool the CPU alone than also the GPU which has a lower power density. Then I tested this again with a Cyberpunk normal gaming load and I saw about 65 to 70 watt on the CPU and about 145 to 160 watt on the GPU. So yeah, if you have a normal gaming scenario with air cooling alone, it can definitely dissipate more than 200 watt. The next big part is regarding the fan and pump control, which is not manually possible. And XMG generally speaks about that without automatic control, they could run into temperature problems and also problems with um, a yeah, problematic relation of the fan speed in the notebook and the fan speed in the AIO. So it could not be as balanced maybe if you run it manually. They also point out that you cannot rely fully on external water cooling because the fan is still needed to have some airflow inside the notebook for cooling of some other components. And in idle, the fan is not spinning on the water cooling because the temperatures of the notebook are low. I can partially understand XMG's view on pump and fan control, but I also partially don't agree with it. Because from my opinion, this is an enthusiast product and enthusiasts should have the opportunity to adjust fan and pump speed. Let's talk about the idle scenario where XMG says that the fan is not spinning because it's not necessary. But yeah, in some scenarios, the fan inside the notebook in idle is still spinning and you can hear it. So I see the point that if you would try to have this fan spinning at a very low RPM in idle, it would definitely assist the cooling inside the notebook. Like if you touch it, it would feel colder and also it would be more quiet because this fan, a bigger fan, can spin at a lower RPM and be more quiet than the fan inside the notebook. So that's, from my perspective, kind of a missed opportunity. And you also have to keep in mind that this is just an additional cooling to what is already inside the notebook. We know that with air cooling, the notebook works fine. So if you can cool it better, the CPU and GPU can clock higher. So that means if you mess around with the cooling solution and you do something so the water cooling is maybe not as efficient, it just means that the CPU and GPU will not clock as high. It's not going to damage the notebook because it's, it's running fine in the air-cooled scenario. And any nowadays notebook and CPU and GPU are just thermally limited and yeah, if you mess around with the cooling it might just not clock as high but I don't see how it's going to damage it. 
Regarding the liquid metal application, XMG says that this is fine, but I cannot really agree with that because we did a lot of testing with this that you have to have it applied to both surfaces to get the perfect wetting and the perfect thermal transfer. Otherwise, from my opinion, it doesn't really make sense to use liquid metal because liquid metal has disadvantages over a normal conventional thermal paste. It's conductive, it's more expensive, it takes a more complex process to apply it. So you should make sure that the result is as good as possible that you're making up versus the risks that are involved with liquid metal. And yeah, not applying it on both surfaces, if you lose like maybe two or three degrees Celsius, then you might as well just use a very good thermal paste and it's like one degree worse. That's just my opinion on it. Um, I think this should be improved. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye-bye.